Welcome back. You know, one of the alleged demands by the Al-Shabaab militia group uh, during the Westgate Mall attack was that Kenya should withdraw its troops from Somalia. In a harsh response, President Uhuru Kenyatta said that the uh, Kenya Defense Forces still in Somalia will not return until order is restored to the war-torn country. The war on terror seems to have been heightened after the Westgate Mall attack, with the international community, of course, coming together to craft the end of the militia group. Well, before we move on to our interview, our very own associate editor, Alex Chamwada, spoke uh, to the President of the Republic of Somalia, His Excellency Hassan Sheikh Mohamud. Let's take a look at that interview. We have a long border between Somalia and Kenya. And here in Somalia, we have uh, terrorist, terrorist groups that are not Somali only, but international, regional, there. A lot of Kenyans are part of that uh, evil forces here in Somalia. But it happened that Somalia is the center that they are making all this mess. And I know that they made a lot of problems to Kenya recently, specifically, whereby the tourist, the economic, the, the life of parts of Kenya has been affected by this. It's a spillover, the border of Somalia. <clears throat> we are very much concerned about that. On the other side, from our side, Somalia, we are very much grateful on the role of Kenya. On all this, Kenya has always been the fallback or the safety net for Somalia. And on top of that, the Kenyan boys and girls in uniform, they have sacrificed their life for the stability and the peace in Somalia. No way for a common conscience that one can, uh, one cannot recognize that level of sacrifice. We made a progress in terms of international relations, in terms of our relationship with the region. We made a progress in terms of security here in Somalia, uh, where the top priority was the security all the time. And uh, in the security sector, for the first time, we have institutionalized our security and uh, we did a lot of work on professionalizing our security forces. A lot of training has been done. Security uh, legislation has been enacted. A new leadership has been uh, selected for the security institutions. And uh, in the ground, uh, progress has been made since within that one year. In, in different parts of Somalia, particularly pushing Al-Shabaab away from Mogadishu as a military and securing that Shabaab is defeated militarily, but still they are, their nature is to melt down into the society and still this type of attacks like roadside, roadside bomb, hand grenade throwing, uh, target assassinations of some important people is still going on but soon that also will be will be will be finished in a post conflict environment the the list of challenges is too long and uh, somalia has has not been without challenge in the past and it's not now and we do we do not expect that there will not be challenge in any state in the world but our challenges are different from a stable country we have unique challenges. So Somalia has that unique challenges, and this challenge, many of these challenges will remain for, for some years to come. All right, so that's the interview there. Of course, to tell us more about Somalia, Kenya, and terrorism is um, senior advisor and spokesperson to the presidency, Abdirahman Omar Osman. Welcome to the Power Breakfast Show. Thank you very much. Of course, a great deal of things have been said about um, what Somalia is doing in terms of dealing with Al-Shabaab, including the fact that the president said they have been defeated militarily. The Westgate Mall attack really brought out the reality of Al-Shabaab in our Kenyan context. The question is, how real is Al-Shabaab in Somalia? Yeah, and as you rightly said, Al-Shabaab is uh, defeated militarily. And thanks to our brothers and sisters in the African Union, in particular, Amisom, which Kenyans are part of that, 
and without them we would not have achieved even the level of success in terms of defeating them militarily. Having said that, but they're not dead yet. They're still alive and they now melted into society and carrying out suicide attacks, roadside attacks. And in Mogadishu for the, for, for the last six months we have seen an increase of that level of, uh, and despite our efforts to, to combat them. So uh, the issue of Al-Shabaab, even though it's confined to Somalia, but it's a global, and that's why Somalia needs a global solution where uh, we are very grateful for the, n for the neighboring countries such as Ethiopia and Kenya coming to rescue, to help us. It is the people of Somalia who are suffering the most because Al-Shabaab have been conducting all these operations in Somalia uh, for these too long, and they're taking advantage of the current situation in Somalia where 22 years lack of functioning government since the collapse of the state in 1991. So uh, we try our best as a government, as a people, and what happened in Westgate really uh, brought to our attention that this is an issue that needs to be confronted by global solution. And our sincere condolences from our president goes to the people and the government of Kenya. And we are very grateful how the leadership of Kenya, in particular uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, has uh, taken a, a decisive leadership on separating the issue of these facts who are causing havoc and, uh, and a problem to the societies. And the people of Somalia and the people of Kenya have all suffered in the hands of these. And you know the Al-Qaeda attacks in Kenya is something that started even before Afghanistan and Iraq. And you know 1998 what happened in, in Kenya. So this is an issue that should unite us and sh we should redouble our efforts in eliminating the threat posed by Al-Shabaab. Perhaps something you, you'd want to respond to is the fact that, of course, we've seen the international community coming together, uh, discussing the issue surrounding terrorism, especially in relation to Somalia. In fact, there was a time, uh, there was a conference in, 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 in the UK in relation to that. Does that help in any way, or is just talk by the international community? Well, it is uh, difficult to, I think at one point the international community are helping in terms of politically, in terms of moral support, but the level of support that we've seen went to Afghanistan and Iraq. If a similar level would have gone to Somalia, the issue would have solved a long time ago. And having said that, I think we are very grateful because we have seen the first time African Union mission uh, succeeding. I think uh, Somalia was uh, a case that brothers and sisters from the African come in to rescue and to help the Somali people and the Somali government. And this is something that we Africans are not very good in terms of uh, claiming credit that we defeated Al-Shabaab or Al-Qaeda associated. If it would have been like uh, European forces or NATO for that matter, I think we would have seen a level of interest for, for the region. But now most of the Kenyans might not be aware of how brave in uh, KDF are doing in Somalia, in particular in Kismayo. The capture of Kismayo was really historic and also uh, killed the lifeline of Al-Shabaab because they used to get in uh, the port of Kismayo and, and, and the resources that they used to get. And now that lifeline is cut. So it is Kenyans who are doing that. We are very grateful on that. And that's why Al-Shabaab targeting Kenya. And when they say we want Kenya to pull out, who are they? They are thugs. They cannot speak on behalf of Somalia. The Somali people and the Somali government is not the ones who are saying that Kenya is to pull out. We are the ones who are saying Kenyans are there to help us, and we are very grateful on that. In the mind of uh, ordinary Kenyans, Al-Shabaab is this huge uh, organization, very organized, capable of organizing a raid like happened at Westgate. Uh, in Somalia, there is now a government in place. Have we been able to identify the leadership? Because these guys were in charge of, of that country or sections of it, like uh, Kismayu, Biro Mogadishu. Are you able to identify the leadership and why has it been difficult to capture the leadership? Absolutely. I think this is uh, where uh, Somalia alone cannot do it. As you know, Somalia is recovering from a stage of chaos, uh, poverty, uh, and piracy, extremism, warlordism. And now it's time we're trying to put together the fragmented society where 
we believe that uh, Somalis, when it's given the opportunity and the country is peace and stable, uh, we will see the benefits. Somalia used to be one of the strongest nations in Africa. It helped all African countries to, to get their liberation from colonialism, all that. We've done our bit uh, in 70s and uh, 60s and 80s. But now, since we are in this stage where uh, the whole fabric of uh, the institution collapsed, and uh, it's uh, difficult for us to uh, identify these uh, perpetrators, in particular those individuals. Now, what happened? They were in Mogadishu. And now, most of South Central Somalia is controlled by Somali government forces and Amazon forces. Yet, as soon as we move to one city, they melt to the society and they go to the. Uh, and, 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 and Somalia is a big country, as okay. you know, and the large. So, it, so it's, it is. It's really Al Shabaab, uh, that it is, is the main uh, terrorist uh, group in uh, Somalia, because, I mean, of course, the in intelligence reports uh, by other states, uh, like the United States, show that there are many terrorist groups that are based in Somalia. Absolutely. Is that, is that true? Absolutely. This is not Al-Shabaab alone. This is not Somali an, an issue. I think the leadership of, of them are foreign jihadists from mm -hmm. Arab countries and other countries. And as you know, the man who was killed recently, Amriki, was from America. And, and the, the issue is what makes more, in terms of strategically, these guys get the leadership strategic decision is from these jihadists who are foreigners, who are not Somalis. Right. And that's why they're very good at controlling the network and trying to provide all the resources needed. They're taking advantage of the societies fragmented, people uh, poverty, and those are the things. And what we're doing, not only fighting through militarily, but the government is doing a number of initiatives, such as recently, we brought all the ulamas, religious leaders, to come together for five-day conference in Mogadishu. And at the end, they issued a fatwa against the violence, extremism, and al-Shabaab, and they ordered for people, everybody to, to should work with the government and mm -hmm. the um, African forces to identify where they are. The problem is those Somalis can easily melt to the society. But now we are in a situation where even the people can see the beast dividend can see what the institution is, w will bring. So it will be a matter of time before we eliminate the threat of al-Shabaab, but we still need the, the, the global support. Yeah, just looking at uh, you know the threat of al-Shabaab, al-Shabaab seems to be using um, religious extremism to basically uh, recruit young people, to basically push their agenda. Uh, for instance, there was a claim that uh, the reason why we're killing people at Westgate Mall is because uh, the Kenyans, the KDF went to Somalia and killed their y women and children, and that's what exactly what we're doing. What is being done to handle that particular indoctrination that is uh, happening in Somalia? Absolutely, you're right. I think this is a phenomena that needs an, an very attention. People will see it as terrorists, might be related to Islam or that, that is not the case. Islam is a peace. And what these people are doing, they're killing innocent people, they're threatening, and that's how they want to rule Somalia and then to move on to the neighboring countries. So in terms of uh, the indoctrination is an, uh, is an issue that needs the international community to confront. At one point, we have seen a level of young Somalis in UK, in the uh, US, in other parts of, uh, of the world coming to Somalia and then blowing up themselves. The issue of suicide, n never been a culture of Africa, never been a culture of Somalis, never been uh, something that could happen easily. So what they do, they are very good at recruiting those disadvantaged young people in the diaspora who left out schools, who have mental problems, who are in the institutions. Sometimes they go to the prisons of those countries and identify those young people and the indoctrinate say the best way for you to end your life is through jihad to help uh, Islam. So the way they bridge the Islam is absolutely categorically how, how do you is, 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 is uh, nonsense. Osman, how do you explain this? I mean, for Kenyans, they see that the K their troops, uh, soldiers went to Somalia to protect Somalis against criminal, uh, the Ashabab. The Ashabab are coming to Kenya saying, you went and killed our children and youth in Somalia. That discrepancy is difficult for an ordinary Kenyan to understand. 
is there this is Somali society so divided the way you know many clans and so forth are there people who are standing outside the mainstream Somalia who need to be incorporated and perhaps would it be a different approach that would wipe out the Al-Shabaab rather than fighting them because you go after them they disappear into the community as you said would it be feasible then that you try and co-opt them into the formal institutions of government into the security agencies mm -hmm. you know bring yeah. them in and say you have soldiers we want them in Come the in. national army so that there is no one saying we are killing others on behalf of others absolutely i think you raised a, an, an important an, an, an issue where yes at one point al shabab they are part of the society and the issue of militarily only cannot be the solution so malgon believes that reconciliation and reaching out to those people are very important and uh, our president divides into three groups. Mm -hmm. Those foreign jihadists right. who are in the country, we have no way that we can negotiate, discuss with them they're about the there. issue of Somalia yes. because they're not Somalis, there's nothing to do with them. The issue of those who have uh, committed crimes against humanity and are uh, internationally known, those we want them to renounce their violence and then a strict procedure will follow after that. But those young people that they brainwash or they use advantage of and uh, either force them to, to go to, to the fight, even we're talking about the children that they use, these, these guys. Mm -hmm. And those are, we're already offering them rehabilitation. We are approaching them to clan elders, to the society, asking them for them to come out from Al-Shabaab to join the, the forces. So we are doing lots of, in terms of rehabilitation process on that. But in terms of the issue of our neighbors, or international community understanding the issue how to differentiate ordinary Somali and Al-Shabaab is again is, is an issue that needs to be brought to, to the attention of in particular our brothers of Kenyans. We are very grateful that this nation is a peace-loving nation and we need to learn a lot from that. But when Al-Shabaab says Kenyans to pull out from Somalia and they're linking with terrorist activities happening here and there, is absolutely, and uh, that is how they want people to perceive, oh, the whole Somalia is useless, they need to sort out the house in order. And well, as soon as we talk about that issue, I think we're missing the point. The point is these are facts. Uh, terrorist groups that uh, committed crimes not only to the people of Kenya, to the people of a Somalia. So made. we need to so what, find a way, yes. innovative ways, not yes. only militarily, intelligence, working together. So now the both leaders, I think uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and President Hassan Sheikh, have good relationship where both of them are young leaders, they have future. So I think we have a lot to, uh, to unite us and to move forward. A suggestion has been made that the, Sudan, uh, the Somali Kenya border needs to be shut because uh, they are using it to cross in here, ferry arms, and do such uh, terrorist attacks as Westgate. Uh, is the closure of the border a possible solution? No. I Not think the possible all. solution is to and uh, find a way to stabilize Somalia. And that's, we are very grateful Kenyan forces are there. Uh, who are helping us. I think once we stabilize, I think the whole country could be a buffer zone mm -hmm. for terrorists not to come to Somalia. Once we have a functioning state in Somalia that can and, and, and stay in the border so both uh, okay. governments can work together, right. that will be the ideal solution and so the so perfect Osman, solution. Uh, but what, what, okay, in, you know, you are of course at the center of government as a spokesman of the president. Within your timelines, when do you think this situation is going to improve, uh, that terrorists are going to either be eliminated or co-opted into a functioning society. Is that possibility there and what timeline are you looking at? I think the timeline our president is very uh, is adamant that in 2016 we will reach where we can hold elections, where the people, even the fragmented societies who are still not sure about the institution and the benefit of the peace dividends and all that, will see that everybody has a stake. Somalis are very good in terms of consultation. Yes. Everybody wants to be involved. Everyone wants to become the president. And maybe that's one of the problems that we have in terms of us fighting, not allowing, compromising each other. Yes, yes. So I think it will be a matter of time. Uh, and another point, the Westgate Mall has brought the whole international world sympathizing the situation, coming together in unity, and saying that we will help Kenya and Somalia. We need that to see to, to be practical 
rather than wait another incident to happen and then again emotionally that yes. world leaders coming together and uniting. What we need is a, a level of commitment from the international community to help the federal government of Somalia to empower them, to empower the institutions so the people uh, can that, see the peace dividends. That is going on from mm. what uh, Mokazi you said. I mean, mm. conferences have been held in Europe, all over Seems the place, in just London talk. the yes. other day. What is the result of these conferences on Somalia? What has happened since those conferences and what is supposed to happen? I think the ultimate goal lies for Somalis to solve their own problems. International community can only support. But then the level of support, the problem we have is since we are fragmented society, we don't have resources and our institutions are not strong. Every time international community says we will hold a conference, we will help you, well then we, we are very much looking forward to it. Yes. But then aftermath and the follow up they don't do and that? how we are not seeing the level of commitment that we've seen in Afghanistan and Iraq, nowhere near. A uh, bit of a concern, especially you saying Somalia should help itself and the international community should just come in to support. It, it sort of goes against uh, what our president said, that the Kenya Defense Forces will remain in Somalia and will not return until order is restored to the war-torn uh, country. Absolutely. I think those are the strong messages coming from Uhuru Kenyatta. is something that we really welcome and that's something that Al-Shabaab uh, will be defeated when they see Kenya, the region, the Somalia are working together, uh, unity in terms of confronting Al-Shabaab. What they want is for them, they use the social media, Twitter and all that, try to divide and take advantage of what are the issues, what are the solutions. Sometimes they, uh, they are the ones who are causing havoc to the refugees who are here. Somalis are very grateful how uh, this nation have helped them in terms of integrate the society, do education and what have you for the last 22 years where Somalia there were none of that. So for us we are very grateful on that but Al-Shabaab are not grateful of that. So they always take advantage of causing havoc within in those refugees and they go to the refugee camps and then they try to divide the, the, the people of but Kenya and the Somalis who are refugees. Uh, uh, isn't so Al-Shabaab a is very small you know, splinter organization, mm -hmm. as it were. How come it has put the whole country, you know, basically uh, hold, uh, holding the whole country to ransom, so to speak? Like, we, Somalia cannot move because of Al-Shabaab or Al-Qaeda, you know. Yeah. Are they just a small terrorist uh, cells here and there, and society can move and take that like every society does? In Kenya, we have all manner of illegal gangs, but country, the country moves forward. Is that not feasible under the Somali circumstances? Well, uh, y this is where I think also the mistake comes in. Mm. Kenya as an institution, regardless of, of when uh, the power changes, when Uhuru comes in, the institution went functioning properly. Right. In Somalia, you have fragmented society, no institution functioning. Right. functioning. So the current president is coming in with no resources, with no institutions, with no uh, fragmented society. So we're trying to put the pieces together. Furthermore, the Soma, when you look Somalia, Somaliland and Puntland, they are peace, stable, democratic processes are happening. So it's only south central of Somalia where the main issue and the main bulk of the problem mm. lies. And once we see a functioning state in institutions in Somalia, I think that will be better for the region. Yeah, perhaps uh, just to go back to the solutions, uh, because so far what we've seen is w every person is going the military way, AMISOM and even the KDF. And if I may just give you a, a scenario of Kenya, for instance, we had um, the outfit, uh, the Mombasa Republican Council. Uh, but once the government decided to sort out land issues at the coast, that threat of the Mombasa Republican Council has really gone down. What is the Somali, the Republic of Somalia doing to sort of integrate Al-Shabaab? Because there are concerns that perhaps are not being addressed. Exactly. Is there something different? What are their demands? Exactly. Yeah. What are their demands and what is the Republic doing yeah, yeah. to meet them so that we don't go the military way? Absolutely. I think in for the last uh, six years we have tried to negotiate with members of uh, Al-Shabaab. As you know, Sheikh Sharif, Sheikh Ahmed was a member of the Islamic Courts Union yeah. and through negotiation and discussion is that they came on board and in Djibouti 2009 there were the group of Islamists who are moderate, 
who renounced the violence and Somali government came together and then formed a uh, national unity. That didn't end the problem. We thought that once you have Sheikh Sharif, who is Islamist, who, uh, who have all the characteristics of uh, a person who uh, can represent Islam, then for them that wasn't enough. What they want is Al-Shabaab. They don't want a Somali issue. What they want is through jihad from Mogadishu to New York. That's what they're aiming. The ideological, uh, if you look at the vision that they have, is to Islamize the whole world oh, by is force, that is by threatening. So uh -huh. that uh, vision and that how recklessly they try to use the young people and the children to use as a human shield sometimes. They come to uh, and, 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 and carry out suicide bombs where 10 young, even uh, not teenagers, yeah. come in blowing up themselves. And all that is something that they want to terrorize. And that's what they're good at. So if we allow them to, uh, to do that, there's no way that they can uh, negotiate with those hardline elements to become a moderate Islamist who is willing to take part of the government institutions. That's okay. not what they want. Uh, let's just uh, you know, paint for us the picture of Somalia. For people who haven't been there, uh, somebody thinks Somalia is a wild <laughs> place where mm -hmm. bombs <laughs> explode every day. Mm. But we have a government and is the whole of Somalia insecure or torn by this insecurity? Or is it functioning and what is going on there? I think when you look back in Somalia, when we had a dictatorship, Siad Barre, uh, really late 80s, that's when those uh, Islamist groups were starting to come up. I think they, were for, they came from Saudi Arabia and all that. That's when they even changed the whole and concept of how people teach or learn Islamization. They were going as far as sometimes saying that your father and mother didn't marry properly according to the Islam uh, procedure, therefore <laughs> you need to ask them to remarry to again. Remarry. So they, that is how it started from late 80s. And then when the institution collapsed and when Somalis fragmented and each clan said, oh, I need to have the power, then civil war started, warlordism came, they were still recruiting to the people. And that's when we saw 2006, the Islamization, the Islamic courts coming in with Al-Shabaab being the military wing. At the time, even people were sympathizing, mm -hmm. the Islamic courts union saying, oh, these are the, our religious leaders, they come to, to help us, and this is the way we can get peace, unity, and, and, and justice. And the way they integrate to the society, they go to the clans, sub-sub-clans, who feel that they're disadvantaged of the institutions, and they say the only way you can get justice is through Al-Shabaab. Islam can only give you the justice that you need. No one else can give you. So that's how they melt it, and the people love the religion, yes. and that's why they take yeah. advantage. But right now, how is uh, Somalia? Is it prosperous, uh, so know, business going on? I mean, apart from explosions here and there, targeting even your own uh, administration, uh, the president, and so forth. Absolutely. Since he was ousted in, in 2011, in uh, August, from Mogadishu, I think that's when we've seen the return of the people coming back, and Somalis are resilient, and they're doing well in terms of and businesses, they are entrepreneurs wherever they go. If you look in Nairobi, if you go to uh, Mombasa, if you go to other cities, uh, even in Europe, you see Somalis are uh, business oriented and are flourishing and doing well. The only thing that we're not doing well is sorting out the problem in terms of politically inside Somalia. Politically. And that be because of too many foreign agendas, too many issues that uh, it would have been difficult. But now we got IGAT, who are member states of the East Africa, coming together and trying to solve the issue of Somalia, uh, understanding that our collectivity is what needs to bring Somalia back. For example, I'll give you Ethiopia now is doing good work in terms of helping our security forces in terms of some of the southern uh, part of Somalia. But in 2006, when Ethiopia were coming in, there were lots of anger, lots of people saying that they came to us. And by, but now, I can uh, assure you that the people of Somalia and the government are very grateful of the Amazon forces who are there, who are defeating Al-Shabaab. And for us, we're trying to retrain our forces, uh, reforming our forces, 
and it will be a matter of time before we see okay, professional what forces. Yes, yes. Well, in fact, with regard to establishing a Somali, you know, forces, police and military, uh, what is it, what, what is going on, and wh when when do you expect to achieve the capacity to hold so that Amisom can withdraw? I think he, our problem we have is we have too many priorities. Let's be frank. Mm -hmm. Our too many priorities because the ca the country is, is scattered and fragmented. Security is number one issue. Number two is uh, justice and bringing in, in law and order in in the country where the people feel uh, confident in the system and the judiciary system. Number three, our public finance management. So what we're doing now in terms of security alone, at one point our forces are in the front line fighting with Al-Shabaab. Number two, they're restoring stability on those cities that who are ousted from Al-Shabaab. Number three, we are training them so that they can be professionalized. Number four, uh, we're trying to find the logistical support that they need and we don't have resources. So you can see all that. In Brussels on 16th of September, and the government put out a compact document where to rebuild Somalia for the next three years. Yes. That compact was a process, consultation process, each region and uh, district of Somalia bringing how we can get back our institutions. We are very grateful for that. And, um, th there were pledged 1.8 billion to help Somalia to rebuild its institutions for the next three years. If that were to bear the fruits, yes. to come on time, to help us, we believe in the next three years we will make a huge progress. All right, many thanks. And we, because of time, we'll have to stop there talking to Abdirahman Omar Osman, who's a senior advisor and spokesperson to the Presidency Republic of Somalia. We'll be right back. Don't go away.